Ingenuity happens on the cusp of chaos. And I will argue today that there's no more chaotic place than the mining industry in South Africa. There's nothing more exhilarating than sitting on the edge, because we're surfing the edge, looking down at this terror happening on your own side. There's the sheer perfection of the brilliance of the human mind reinventing its way out of chaos. So I'm going to make the case today that it is in our collective vested interest in South Africa to reinvent business case for mining. And the previous speaker spoke about the long-term investment probability. So I'm going to introduce a concept to you today uh, called closure mining. And we're talking now about surfing the edge, how to reinvent our way out of this absolute catastrophe that is coming towards us. So what is this notion of uh, closure mining? We've heard of the concept of military intelligence, and we often think of that as being an oxymoron. So is, is, mining, is mining for rehabilitation also an oxymoron? How do I tell you about this? What is, what is this thing called closure mining? Let me first explain to you non-mining people what conventional mining is about. Conventional mining is about, think of this, you go along and you rent a room in a hotel. And by staying in the hotel room, you've paid your dues, you can have a bit of a party, you can leave a bit of a mess, but the important thing is somebody else cleans up after you. That's the nature of the business. That's the contract that you have. But closure mining is different. Closure mining is like owning your own house. By owning your own house, you have a vested interest in the long-term outcome, so you keep the grass clean. And you might still have a party in the house on occasion, but you don't let your guests trample the tacos, dip into your carpet, or spill the red wine on your carpet. And because you've got a vested interest in long-term relationships, you get on with your next-door neighbor in a friendly way, and you ultimately grow your asset because you want to sell your asset in the future. That's the difference. Closure mining is about being part of a community, part of a bigger picture. It's not a mind-boggling experience. I've learned that all eloquent solutions are very simple. And the very simple solution that I put forward today, this concept of closure mining, is nothing more than elevating the level of management above the level of the shaft or the pit, because that's traditionally where optimization takes place. And by optimizing at the level of the shaft or the pit, what you do is you externalize all of your liabilities to maximize your profits, and you leave the mess for somebody else to clean up, like your hotel room. So, Closure for, uh, mining for closure. This is a photograph that's about to come out on a national TV program where we're actually trying to get this idea out there. And you'll see there that I'm actually shaking hands with a person, and that person is from Wits University, where we are busy creating the capacity to do post-closure landscape rehabilitation, the actual hardcore technical uh, things around it. So why is this important? Why should we actually care about it? This is a very dramatic graph, and I don't want to bore you with numbers and graphs, but the first thing you'll notice about this graph is that it actually tells you about the production cycle of gold in South Africa. And I don't know if you knew this, but 40% of all of the gold ever mined by humankind in all of recorded history comes from the Witwatersrand gold mining fields. 40%. That includes the Incas, it includes the, 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 the Romans, it includes the Egyptians, all of recorded history, 40%. Now, you'll notice a few things about that chart. The first thing you'll notice is the very, very steep rate of decline. And I'm telling you right now, we're surfing the edge, the cusp of chaos. That turbulence coming from that is happening in the, in the gold mining industry right now. I can state with a high level of, of, of certainty that within the next decade, the majority of gold mining companies in South Africa will be insolvent. And I know that some activists will go out there and say, oh, yippee, yay, this is good. The mining industry is bad. They, they better get rid of them. But there are a couple of unintended consequences we need to understand. The second thing you look about in that curve is you'll see there are three discrete subcurves. And those three discrete subcurves have enabled us to push the inevitable out a little bit. So I'm suggesting that we propose a fourth subcurve, and that is this closure mining, whereby we can actually extend the life of mining by up to 20 years creating jobs in an industry currently shedding jobs, but mining for closure by realigning the interests of the mining in investors with the broad interest of society. So, how is this done? Um, what people don't know is that for every ton of gold ever mined in South Africa, in the Witwatersrand gold fields, between 10 
and 100 tons of uranium were also mined. Did anybody know that? That means that in our collective gold mining dumps around the Gauteng area, Gauteng, city of gold, place of gold, is 430,000 tons of uranium. Because for most of the life of mining, uranium had no commercial value, it was discarded. So I'll put it to you that Johannesburg is probably the most uranium contaminated city in the world. And it's in no one's best interest because ultimately when these mining companies go bankrupt, and they will in the next decade without any question of doubt, they're going to leave behind those dumps and those dumps are going to be mobilized by wind. They're going to be mobilized by rain because the design of those dumps is such that the assumption was there would always be a cash flow to keep the machinery going to keep these silly shapes these square shapes. And I, I, I know I'm an advisor to senior executives in the mining industry. Uh, one of my clients has just brought one of these companies out of liquidation. And the first thing we noticed was the fact that those dumps had slumped and this uh, uranium is mobilized area. So the, is it in our interest to have the economic capital of Africa sink into this quagmire of uranium? The answer is no. So this landscape here is probably, this is the almost like, the, like the, the ground zero of the gold mining industry. This is where decant occurred, acid mine drainage decant occurred in 2002 at this particular shaft called 18 Winds. That uh, image can no longer be taken now because it's, uh, the mining companies took away that, uh, that old fan there. Uh, water with pH of three came bubbling to the surface and uh, caused a huge amount of public interest, huge amount of media uh, uh, interest. So. How do we do this thing? How do we actually take the money into a better future? Well, it's quite simple. Firstly, we embrace this notion of stewardship. And stewardship is a powerful idea because stewardship is about caring for something that you don't own, but something that you have a vested interest in, something that makes a difference in your company. In this context, I'm a water specialist, so water you don't own, but water you impact on. So caring for that highly acidic water. But more importantly, it's about cleaning up all of the uranium mess and the underground void. So, how's this done? Firstly, we've got these huge mine, uh, 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 piles of mine residue on surface called tailings. For every ton of tailings, there's a third of a gram of gold, but between 50 and 200 grams per ton of uranium. So we have to move 3,000 tons of tailings to recover one kilogram of gold, but in so doing, you recover 600 kilograms of uranium. That's clever stuff. Now, that might not have your commercial value, but you can sequester that uranium. You can make it safe so it doesn't become a toxin for the future. So the way we do it is quite simple. We blend this low-grade, high-volume gold from the tailings with a high-grade, low-volume hard ore from underground. And although the mining industry has come to an end, don't think that there's no resource underground. There's probably enough a hardcore resource to keep illegal mining going for the next 500 years and proper mining for at least the next 20 years. But, but pillar extraction, retreat mining as you come out of the ground so you actually collapse all the mine void behind you or you fill the mine void up with tailings from the surface. That's closure mining. And in, in effect, previously, the majority of your, of your main mining companies will walk away if they cannot get a throughput through their mill of five grams per tonne. I know we can make a profit at one gram per ton. This is marginal stuff. This is, this is that little dung beetle moving across the industrial landscape, cleaning up those big piles of industrial waste. This is what closure mining is about. So I would like to just wrap up now by saying that South Africa is a remarkable country. It's the only country in the world where, where a sitting government negotiated itself out of existence voluntarily. It's the only country in the world that had weapons of mass destruction that voluntarily relinquished them, uh, chemical, biological, and nuclear. It's the only country in the world where a prisoner of conscience recognized that his jailer was as much a victim of the system as he was. But more importantly, it's also a mining-based economy. And as a mining-based economy, we've always surfed the edge. We've always been out there. We've always looked down in the abyss, and we've always pulled back in sheer terror just before we fall down. So I'm collectively giving you the message now, and I'm calling on all of you to please start supporting us, particularly the investment community, as we reinvent this business case for mining, mining for closure, so that at the end of the day, the mining industry can now start becoming a respected citizen uh, that does something useful. Instead of leaving behind these hazardous waste piles, uh, old shafts oozing uh, acidic uh, water from the ground, all of this can be cleaned up. And as I say, it's cleaned up in this very, very simple process. So with that, I thank you very much. I try and be on brief and budget and on time, and that's what I've done today. And I leave you with this, with this powerful message. 
Closure mining, I believe, is the future of the mining industry in South Africa. And I believe we can reinvent that business case. I believe we can actually extend the life of the gold mining industry by 20 years. And we can achieve something useful for society thereafter. I thank you very much. <laughs>